In today's video, we're gonna talk about why the scale weight fluctuates so much and how you can become good at using the scale to track your progress by separating the signal from the noise. Now we know from all the literature that actually people who weigh themselves regularly and use the scale tend to do really well in terms of weight loss. So as frustrating as the scale can be, it's not necessarily a tool we wanna to throw out completely unless we have real psychological problems with it. A better thing that we wanna do is just learn how to understand what the hell is going on with the scale, which is what we're talking about today. So I wanna give you two examples. I'm gonna give you an example of a man that is losing, creating a deficit that technically will produce a pound and a half of, a week, uh, of weight loss, of fat loss per week for like, let's say 10 weeks. And what a pound and a half of weight loss really is, is something like, let's call it four and a half thousand calories. And for our women, it's something like 3000 calories per week. Those are the two deficits. And what I wanna say is that rather, this is the, the trend line, the, the signal of losing a pound and a half a week. So this is a man and he's losing a pound and a half a week and that is what it would look like if he was perfectly losing a pound and a half a week as you would think might be the case from that deficit. But in reality, here's what happens, right? He eats something with a bit of salt and then he does a bit of walking and then he has a bunch of carbs and then he, he doesn't go to the loo for a couple of days and then he's blocked up and this is what generally happens is that yes, he's losing a pound and a half a week, but he will normally have with a male client, I typically have a kind of probably up and down by two pounds. So probably it's trending down at a pound and a half a week, but it will bounce around kind of in a, in a two pound range. So, you know, if, if you go out and have a big Chinese, a big salty or Thai food, your scale weight will bounce up by two, three pounds. And then, you know, a couple of days later, it will be down. And we know, we know when your scale weight goes up overnight by two pounds, think about it, did you just, I create a deficit of seven, 8,000 calories by eating 10,000 calories that day. No, it never happened, it never happened. The faster the scale moves, the less likely it is to be fat. And in fact, the slowest moving component of your scale weight is your fat mass. It's only changing by a couple of ounces a day, 100 grams here, 100 grams there, and all the big fast movements in both directions. At the start, when you begin a diet, you start the keto diet, you lose 10 pounds, you probably know that seven or eight pounds of that, that first week is water. That's what happens. It's water weight fluctuations based on how much salt you're eating, based on how many carbs you're eating, based on your hydration status, based on how much you've sweat, based on whether you've been to the toilet, that's what's going on. Now, it's even trickier for women, right? So women have the normal noise of carbs and salt and hydration, but this is something that can be really challenging and I've seen women shift in excess of 10 pounds over the course of a month, they can have cyclical weight. So basically, let's say she's going through a regular cycle and then in, in the couple of build up days coming up to her cycle, I have seen women gain up to 10 pounds of just pure water retention, just because some women are more sensitive to their cycle in terms of water retention, go right up, which can be brutal, right? If you're losing a pound a week and you, if you're shifting, the scale is gonna bounce up and it comes out and then the cycle hits and then it all just comes off again. So this is why it is very, very important to be very skeptical when it comes to scale weight fluctuations, particularly for women. You really need to be comparing kind of weekly averages in the first and fifth and ninth week, second week, week sixth week, things like that. If you're gonna use a scale, also try and use some tape measurements, use photos. My general rule of thumb when I'm working with people is I think the vast majority of men, unless they have a real problem with the scale, should just use the scale and use it regularly. I haven't had a lot of problems with men with the scale. With women, it's very different. I would have, you know, probably 60%, 50 to 60% of women using the scale happily. Some women, it just doesn't work. We just use photos, just use tape measurements. If you're getting on the scale, you stand on the scale, and if you see a bad number, you're totally deflated. It might just be that the scale is not for you. Unless you can come up with a, unless you can learn to separate the signal and the noise, you know, it might just be that the scale's not for you. And if you're really, if you're really gonna kind of, I have this problem a lot where, People just use one weigh-in per week and you don't know which day you're gonna get. It's actually kind of more 
education or to just weigh yourself daily, as long as you can stand on the scale and just go, oh, that's interesting, and not have that negativity bias, because what people do is they, 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 they discount the, all the low ones, they're like, yeah, 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 and then that one high weight, they just really, really affects them, and that's a really bad place to be. So if you're having that problem, you need to separate the signal from the noise, and if you can't separate the signal from the noise and create a healthy relationship with the scale, then just use photos or just use measurements. The scale might not be for you. Hope that is helpful. And remember, if the scale weight moves fast in either direction, down or up, you know for a fact that it is not fat mass because, you know, calculate it out. You, there's no chance that you're creating a deficit of more than, well, at best, half a pound a day, much more likely to be kind of three, four ounces at very, very best. All right, hope you enjoyed that. I'll catch you another day. If you want some help with that, check out my coaching offer. And if you've got questions, throw me a question and I'll, I'll try and do a short video like this to answer it. Thanks very much.